I don't know how old you are, Xavier, but I'm going to ask you a couple questions that just been on my mind this week. Sure. And really the last couple of years, but this week, a couple of them. Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. It's not, is, it, is it even a question? No, not at but, all. But so many young guys talk to me about how much better LeBron was. And I'm like, you guys didn't see Jordan, but you should have respect for the people that understand the game of basketball and tell you that Jordan was on a, another level. Now, LeBron is, you know, the real deal. Love LeBron. Sure. But he, he's not Mike. He's not Mike. And you are from Cleveland saying that. Come on, yeah. y'all. Y'all hear this, man? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was... When I used to see Mike in person, I used to, you know, wear bull stuff. You know, how could you not be a Jordan yeah. fan? You know, right. wrong, you know. Um, how can people find you online? You can find me at on Instagram, Xavier underscore peoples. Okay. Um, Facebook. You can find us on Instagram at HBCU Change, mm -hmm. uh, LinkedIn, all major platforms, Twitter. We're there everywhere. What do you wish? I had asked you that I haven't yet. Where to go to download the app. And that is. There we go. Great. That was a good Apple, one. The Apple App Store, the, the Google Play Store. Um, you can go on our website, hbcuchange.com, um, and, and download. I think, you know, this is all about group economics right here us giving a little change, everybody pitching in to make sure that our schools are self-sustainable. This is what this is all about. And so if we can get an all hands on deck approach, we can do something phenomenal that will revolutionize how we give back to our schools going forward. And this will be a story to tell in history. I'm trying to make history with this. That's what this is all about. I, f I feel real good about this. Now, it's some, this is something I n rarely do. I can't say never because I've done it before. Um, ask me a question, because when I get thoughtful leaders sure. that have, you know, understand of what's going on in the world and you understand branding and all that, I'm going to give you a chance to ask me a question. OK. I'm actually going to we're going we're gonna to talk about politics a little bit. There we go. All right. As a black man, do you feel that black men are left out of the conversation on both the Democrat and the Republican, Republican side? Definitely. And when you just look at history, nothing, no president, no politics, no policies have ever done anything to increase or help the black plight and the black plight is headed by the black man. Mm -hmm. So definitely. What okay. about you? Do you think so? No, I, I agree. I think, um, you know, a lot of people were upset with when Puff said, um, you know, we're holding the vote hostage. And then I think Ice Cube came out and said the same thing last mm -hmm. week. But I, I was talking to someone and I said, I think subconsciously what ice cube and puff was saying was that we don't see ourselves in any of these platforms and so why should we vote for something that we don't even see ourselves in i think black women um the democrats have done a good job of speaking to black women and yes. and, and cultivating black women but i don't necessarily think that they've done a good job of speaking of black men and cultivating black men to get them to support them totally like they have for black women. Because black women have, have definitely held down the Democratic Party, but I think that's because black women see a space for them in a party, but I don't know if black men necessarily see a space for themselves in the Democratic Party. And I think that they need to do a better job of speaking to black men and speaking to black issues Black men issues, if you will. Uh, I, to I totally, agree. I totally agree with you. You put that very eloquently. And I was thinking, do you think black women and black LGBTQ put 
those issues, the female issues and the LGBTQ issues above black issues? No, um, I've seen people say that, but I think, um, before they're anything, they're black. And um, I, I've seen it cut both ways. But but I think the reality is that when you are part of a um, subset of a group, it's just like anything else, the, the squeaking wheel gets the oil. Yeah. And so, um, I think they raise their hand and they raise their voices because they want their issues and their concerns heard. And people may take it as if they put their subsect in front of their blackness when in, in actuality, they're not doing that. They're just saying, hey, I'm here. Do you see me? Right. That's what right. About. right. Makes sense. Did you see that they uh, said Jeff Bezos is uh, worth 200 billion and the first person to be worth 200 billion and then somebody brought up to me that Mansa Musa who was the uh, head of the Mali empire was worth 400 billion yeah and I was just thinking about how much they really rewrite history with how they tell what was going on and I think it's important for us to kind of control the narrative and in media we really take that really seriously of pushing the black narrative out here but not in a just a perfect way we want to push it in an authentic way and i think we need to really take back that and really really be intentional about what images we put out there i think you're spot on with that you know since the george floyd killing i've learned so much about black people black culture and i consider myself to be a red a well-read person that i didn't know before yeah. And so um, what we have to do is a better job of educating ourselves, educating our little ones on who we are as a people. So when they go out in this tough world, they can go out with the confidence that they have the ability to conquer as well. Yeah. And so your, your image of the richest man in the world isn't Jeff Bezos. Right. It, it can be someone who looks just like you. I thought it was so phenomenal online. Was it yesterday that everyone was posting how Tyler Perry became a billionaire? Yeah. Uh, because even, you know, myself, it gives me hope that one day that I can attain the same type of um, success that Tyler Perry has, has gained as well. And so um, President Obama, I mean, uh, the list goes on um, outside of our brothers that, that hoop and entertain. There are right. other ways for you to be successful as well. So that's what that's about. And even for adults, it's not just for kids. It's, it's for us, too. You know, yeah. because we're on this grind every single day. You're, you're on the grind. You have your businesses and, and, and you want to build your businesses to be successful. We need to see the Tyler Perry's of the world so we can know that, hey, we have an opportunity and it's in reach for us as well. Right. And we need to have more discussions like this. We need to really pull back that curtain and say, hey, this is exactly how it's done. Yep. And, um, you know, so brothers like you and, you know, some other brothers, we need to, you know, consistently have conversations and put it out here and then document this because there's never been another generation that could document what they've done in building. You almost well, you had to be a celebrity for them to document your life. Now we can kind of control it and we can put it out on YouTube and it lives forever. We can put it out in podcast form. So I'm thinking about doing a podcast just about just black businesses, sure. you know, just putting out there, just really giving the game. So if I do that, hopefully I'll have your support. Absolutely. Xavier Peoples, this was great. This was hey, great. Man. Awesome. I think, I think HBCU change is the most simplistic way for people to donate to HBCUs without even without having to think about it. And they can do it in a way that's not going to truly affect their lifestyle. Right. You don't think I got a, a thousand or two. I don't have it. But 56 to 84. I know I'm probably getting your numbers messed up like that's that's doable. 
That's yeah. true. We, we can do and, that. All and cap it. So even if you want to just give twenty or twenty five dollars, right? You know, uh, whatever it is, give something, right? You know, and something is is better than nothing. And um, these schools need you, so Definitely. let's do our part, just a little bit at a time. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with this: um, the true call to action is, as we see things that are going on in the world particularly for black people, I think that we need to figure out a way, if we want to get big corporations' attention, we need to figure out a way to become self-sustainable when where we're not relying on them. And that's what HBCU change is all about, getting these schools not to have to rely on big donations from big corporations and government funding as well, because government funding can be cut just as well as anything else can be cut. And so we need to be self-sustainable so we can show the world that we can do this on our own and truly get their attention. That's what this is all about. Didn't they say the Asian population votes the least? They have the something like that, but they're self-sustainable. They don't really need politics. Do you think we need to look at their culture and, and how we operate? Or is you know, is it totally different with them being, you know, from an Asian descent or we're from African descent? Um, I think that um I'm always careful to say that, um, you know, we need to be like another culture. What I will say is there are definitely some principles from their culture that we can take. And, and that is um, spending money with ourselves, banking black. Yes. There are black insurance companies insuring black. Um, being black through and through the seed money that I received from HBCU change came from a black bank. Awesome. And so HBCU change is black through and through. And yeah. so this is a bank. I couldn't have gone to any other big bank and they wouldn't have given me a loan for this app, but this black bank saw my vision, believed in my vision, believe in HBCUs, and said, hey, Xavier, we're going to give you this to go and start this business because we believe it. I would have gotten that anywhere else. That's a great place to end this. Yep. Xavier, if you, if you ever need anything, we're always going to be here for you. And we really, really, really appreciate you, what you're doing and then taking the time to talk to us. All right. Thank you, man. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Xavier. All right.